Hypothesis-driven research helps answer scientific questions so we can understand the natural world around us. Scientists make a living out of answering questions like, how does the climate change impact health? Or how do gut bacteria affect our organ systems in our body? But the process is a bit more nuanced than you might think. Let's take a closer look with an example. Say we want to understand what causes cavities. The first step is to narrow down the specific scientific question to answer. For example, we know our teeth can feel particularly sticky after eating sugary foods like cotton candy. Based on this, a scientist may ask, does eating more sugar increase the incidence of cavities? This is a scientific question because it can be answered with observations, experiments, and gathering evidence in the natural world. On the other hand, should I brush my teeth? It's not a good scientific question because the answers are opinions, beliefs, and values. Once we know our scientific question, we can develop a hypothesis, which is a possible answer to the question. Developing and testing hypotheses is the core of hypothesis-driven research. Let's take a closer look. Most of the time, forming a hypothesis requires having existing knowledge, making observations, and doing some preliminary research. Based on our scientific question, one possible answer could be eating more sugar causes cavities. This is a hypothesis we can test to help explain what causes cavities. So what makes a hypothesis a good one? It must meet the following conditions. One, be specific. Two, be testable. And three, be falsifiable, or able to be proven false. Once we have a hypothesis, we need to test it with an experiment. To do so, we first write the hypothesis as two competing claims, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis predicts there is no effect or relationship between the two variables being tested. In this case, our null hypothesis is that the amount of sugar eaten, the independent variable, or what we can change during an experiment, has no effect on the number of cavities, the dependent variable or what we measure during the experiment. The alternative hypothesis is often the same as the initial hypothesis, and it predicts that there is a relationship between the variables. In this case, one alternative hypothesis could be that increasing the amount of sugar increases the number of cavities developed. Our hypothesis leads to the prediction. People who eat a lot of sugar may get more cavities which we can then test with an experiment. Scientific experiments are designed to either reject or support the null hypothesis based on the data collected. A statistical test allows us to weigh evidence for and against the null and alternative hypotheses. Rejecting the null hypothesis allows us to accept the alternative hypothesis as the best current explanation of the experimental observations. By repeating this process with different hypotheses, all investigating the same question, we get closer and closer to the best explanation for that question. This is hypothesis-driven research. When analyzing the results of an experiment, it's important to keep in mind that even if a statistical test shows there is a relationship between the variables, it does not necessarily mean one causes an effect on the other. There is just an association. In our example, even if we show that eating more sugar leads to more cavities, this does not necessarily mean sugar causes cavities. The reality is that sugar feeds bacteria that can destroy tooth enamel, leading to a cavity. So fully testing our hypothesis requires further experimentation. This is hypothesis-driven research. And perhaps more importantly, even if the results of an experiment aren't what you expect, hypothesis-driven research always has value for not only understanding the natural world around us, but developing new hypotheses to be tested. Science is not about proving a hypothesis right, because a hypothesis is not an absolute truth. Scientific research is about getting closer to the best hypothesis for how something works.